Hello again, uh, it's good to see you. Uh, today in our Summer in Proverbs, we're in Proverbs 17. That's Proverbs 17, as usual, pause the video, have a read, and we'll talk. Just a reminder, of course, that we don't get to talk about all the Proverbs in each chapter. There's far too many uh, for a short time, so I pick out a couple that sort of struck me. Uh, others may strike you, and it's, that's the great thing about the Word of God is that it's uh, always so good to read and so good to be um, uh, listening to it and listening to and uh, hearing what God says, and especially with Proverbs, hearing God's wisdom. Uh, uh, one of the ones, I'm not going to talk about this a lot, but I just noticed it because it was kind of it was kind of interesting. Um, verse 12, better to meet a bear robbed of her cubs than a fool in his folly. And I thought, uh, knowing what a mama bear is apparently like when robbed of her cubs, uh, and be better, better to ha kind of have to deal with that, um, which would be pretty bad, than to uh, um, meet a fool in his folly. Um, but that's not particularly what I was uh, thinking. I was just kind of wondering about, uh, thinking about that comparison. Um, uh, but I was wanted to talk today about what I think we see uh, some some proverbs in, in chapter seventeen which show us the wisdom of silence. Uh, now I uh, 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 there's a couple of uh, um, uh, examples here. Um, for example, verse twenty seven: A man of knowledge uses words with a, with restraint, and a man of understanding is even tempered. That is, that there's often wisdom in using words carefully or, or not speaking. Um, uh, and there's, uh, there's, there's more like that. Um, uh, verse 7, arrogant lips are unsuited to a fool. How much worse, lying lips to a ruler. Um, uh, or verse 5, he who mocks the poor shows contempt for their maker. Whoever gloats over disaster will not go unpunished. When you see something go wrong for someone else, it can be tempting to go, ha, I told you so, or to gloat over it. Um, but here, here the Proverbs say, better not, better, better to kind of hold your tongue uh, and to uh, see disaster and, and rather than say, it serves you right, say instead, there but for the grace of God go I. Um, another one along similar lines, verse 14. Starting a quarrel is like breaching a dam. So drop the matter before a dispute breaks out. Sometimes I don't know if you've ever seen videos of dams breaking when when a disaster happens, and you'll see it often is just it's it looks like a very little trickle of water. Um, it's almost like oh it's nothing, but that little trickle of water, the amount of pressure behind it, um, uh, eventually becomes this torrent and totally destroys the dam. And that's what the proverb says: starting a quarrel is like doing that. You you don't know when you start this fight. Where's it going to end up? You don't know when you kind of push and push and push, and so you, you as we say, we're in fighting in a fighting mood. Where it's going to end up, and um, uh, and so far better to be silent. Drop the matter before the dispute breaks out. Drop the matter before what you think is just a little thing becomes this massive problem and this massive dam breaking, causing massive disaster. There is often wisdom in silence, in using our words carefully. Uh, uh, you can see it over there. You, you can see similar lines in verse 19. Um, he who loves a quarrel loves sin. He who builds a high gate invites destruction. He who loves a quarrel loves sin. Um, a man of perverse heart does not prosper. He whose tongue is deceitful falls into trouble. It's so good to just hold our tongue and to remember that there's wisdom in actually not uh, adding fuel to the fire. Uh, and lastly, and, and I thought this is this is a good one to end on. Um, uh, I think often a lot of us, I know I could often uh, benefit from this. Verse twenty-eight, the very last one. Even a fool is thought wise if he keeps silent, and discerning if he holds his tongue. Here, the, here the uh, the writer saying, you know what? You might not be wise. You might be a bit of a fool, but if you just shut up and say nothing. Um, uh, then uh, people think you're wise. People think, oh, you're very thoughtful. And But as soon as you speak, then all of a sudden people realise how much of a fool you are. Uh, and there is uh, a lot of, an awful lot of wisdom there, isn't there? I think it used to be a joke, go, um, better to remain silent and to be thought a fool than to open your mouth and remove all doubt. Um, uh, and, there's a, and there's a similar idea there. It's a bit, bit harsher, that, that one I just gave you there, wasn't it? But uh, 
Even a fool is thought wise if he keeps silent. There is an awful lot of wisdom in not jumping in, not uh, jumping in with your with with the first thought or with your fir- with the first thing to say, not being the first to speak. Uh, in fact, not speaking at all and just listening and seeing what um, seeing what else is uh, said. Uh, and then people will say, "Oh, they're thoughtful. Uh, you're, you're thought wise, and far better to be thought wise than." As I said in my slight changing the proverb, to open my mouth and to remove and to uh, have people realise, oh, he's not wise at all. Um, uh, so let let me encourage you uh, to practice the wisdom of silence. Doesn't mean you say nothing at all. Obviously, you've actually got to, you still want to relate and talk to people and and encourage them. But uh, when there's things going on, when, when there's when there's quarrels, that sort of thing, the wisdom of silence. And the wisdom of just waiting to see how things go is a far better way to go than jumping in and, uh, as we saw here, um, uh, breaching the dam uh, and causing all sorts of destruction. The New Testament reminds us that the tongue, even though it's a small organ in the body, uh, causes great damage. Uh, and that's why uh, the wisdom of silence is such a... Uh, 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 practicing silence is often a wise thing to do. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, thank you uh, for this uh, wisdom you've given us today. And Father, do you pray that you'd help us as we relate to one another uh, to practice the wisdom of silence, uh, not complete silence, not to never relate to anyone again, but to, uh, but to uh, use our words with restraint and to be careful how we speak and be careful in what way we talk. Um, and indeed, uh, to listen and to, uh, yes, to practice silence uh, and to be thought wise in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow.